Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about the North Polar Ice Cap. It is the single most vulnerable load-bearing element of the current ecological balance in the Earth's climate system. In 1980, it looked like this, and last year, uh, 14 months ago, it looked like this. But I want to go beyond just the surface area of the Arctic and look at the thickness of the Arctic. The Navy submarines have been patrolling under the Arctic, and uh, with those measures and others, uh, we have now uh, seen the truth the scientific community has been putting out that there's a positive feedback loop. Most of the sun's rays bounce off the ice, and as the ice melts, as in the right-hand part of that image, instead of 90% or so of the sun's rays being reflected, 90% or so are, are absorbed, and the heat builds up. So in 2005, a new record loss of ice was measured, which is equivalent to every state east of the Mississippi River. For most of the last three million years, I'm told, the area covered by the Arctic ice cap has been roughly equivalent to the lower 48 states minus an area roughly equal to Arizona. I'm not singling out Arizona. <laughs> this, this graph wasn't made during the recent general election campaign. <laughs> But uh, the scientists that I met with at the National Snow and Ice Data Center were truly shocked when in 2007, in one year, it, to use their phrase, uh, fell off a cliff. And, and again, to put this in perspective, that would mean another whole row and a half of states west of the Mississippi River. This is happening quickly, and it is picking up speed. But now to the... Uh, the depth of the ice. You could say that the uh, Arctic ice cap is, in a sense, a beating heart for the ocean and climate system. In the winter, it expands. In the summer, it contracts, as seen of this, in this uh, cardiothermogram of a real human heart. What I'm going to show you next measures the thickness of the ice with the permanent ice marked in red over a 30-year period. Again, the dark blue is when the winter ice expands. The so-called permanent ice, five years old or older, is much thicker. And you can see what's happening to it over time. It's diminishing fairly rapidly. And that's the ice that survives from one year to the next. And when that's gone, you can see it spilling out along the east coast of Greenland, almost like blood from a body. It was here. And now it's here. Dr. Václav Maslowski at the Naval Postgraduate School has said, has calculated uh, that in his view there is an 80% chance it will be completely gone during the summer months in five years. It can come back, uh, but not if we allow the continued and rapid buildup of heat uh, at depth in the Arctic Ocean. When this giant mirror uh, if you will, is replaced by the absorption of heat in the Arctic Ocean, it has a number of consequences, and I'm only going to mention two of them briefly. Uh, of course, everybody has heard about the, the polar bears, and I'm not going to dwell on that, but the area around the Arctic Ocean uh, has a lot of frozen carbon in the ground. And as that permafrost thaws, it has the potential for being turned by microbes into methane, which later breaks down into CO2. Uh, the total amount already in the atmosphere could double during the time uh, when this methane was released, uh, if it is released. Dr. Katie Walter from the University of Alaska sent this image of a shallow lake in Alaska where methane is bubbling up. And as some of you know, there is an effort underway to try to understand what appears to be an increase in methane emissions already uh, in the Arctic. Uh, Dr. Walter and her team went out to another shallow lake uh, last winter. <laughs> She's OK. 
Okay. Uh, we'll recognize that as field research. 